This ordinary looking cassette is in fact an extraordinary advance in hi-fi technology. There's a recording of Shahrazada on here, but a recording with a difference. Because on that conventional machine, it doesn't sound a bit like music, although that noise you can hear will be familiar to anyone who has a home computer. The music has been converted into computer code before recording. It's digital, and when it's played on this machine, it's converted back into music. Definitely a lot better. This is the prototype. It's the first time it's been seen publicly outside Japan for a standard cassette recorder with the superior quality of digital recording techniques, where music's converted into a series of electronic pulses so the information can be recorded without the normal loss of quality on conventional cassette recordings. Now, the sort of problems you do get are the variations in tape speed and the irritating background hiss during the quiet passages of music. Look on this machine what can happen when you have an ordinary tape machine and, first of all, an original recording. We've also got a 10th generation copy of the first recording on the second track. That's a copy of a copy of a copy 10 times removed. Now, switch over to that, you'll hear the hiss. Back again to quality and onto the hiss. The sound has definitely degenerated. A real problem on cassette recorders at home because most pre-recorded cassettes are already four generations from the original by the time they go on sale. On this digital machine, we did exactly the same thing. And now I'm going to switch between the tracks, switch, back, and switch, and there's no difference in quality. However many times you copy it, a digital recording will always sound as crisp and clear, because you're copying electronic pulses, which aren't vulnerable to interference like normal recording. Digital recorders like this one have been used for some time in recording studios for almost all classical records. So why has it taken so long to develop a cassette version of this machine? Well, it is quite easy to record music as digital code, but it's very difficult to record that code onto the smallest of tapes. We've got a model here of a conventional cassette recorder, and as the tape passes over the recording head, the music's recorded as a continuously varying signal in two tracks for stereo. Now, if we took just a small part of that signal and converted it to digital, the code would take up this sort of space and more. So the designers of the new machine solved the problem by spreading the information over the whole width of the tape instead of the length. Now, on this one, I'll switch it on, the head records over eight tracks, four for each stereo channel. The tapes also run slightly faster, and by using new metal tape with a greater concentration of magnetic particles on it, there's even more storage capacity for the digital code than on standard tape. And that's remarkable because, don't forget, we're talking about tape only an eighth of an inch wide, which means each track can only be the width of a human hair. And there is another bonus with digital recording. As well as recording coded music, it can also record coded pictures. Now, I've got a picture there, which will be coming up in just a minute, because it takes a while for it to come up after it's been switched on. What happens is the video data is mixed in with the music code, and then it's displayed on a television. Here it comes, just like CFAX. And that picture could eventually be anything from a portrait of a composer to the actual words and score of a song. A pleasure we'll have to wait for, because this prototype won't be on sale for at least another three years. <laughs>